Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some fun paper crafting. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel and a big welcome to all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for making the decision to join this amazing online crafting family. Guys, I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. And a big thank you to everyone who has been so supportive of my channel and so supportive to me. So today we're going to do something that is simply not done enough. We spend so much time on our mobile devices, so much time texting back and forth. So today we're going back to the original mobile devices, pen and paper. And just what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that today we are going to make something for autumn. Not only will it be for autumn, it can really be any season, any reason, any gender, but I'm theming this one for autumn. And the beauty of it is we're going to make it very personal by writing, something we don't do enough of. So when you take the time to write a personal note, whether you make the envelope, whether you make the item that you're writing on, that personal note just means so much. So that's what we're going to do today. And I'll give you a closer look at this once we get ready to make it, but it's going to be perfect, like I said, for any season, any reason, any gender. And I also think that a set of these would make a pretty good craft fair seller. So y'all know what time it is? It's time to make it. Okay, so here is today's project. It is actually going to be a gorgeous fall mailable. And I hope this plaid is showing up well on camera because it is gorgeous in person. And what I've done is I have made an envelope so that once we make what's on the inside, we can take this and mail it. It might require just a little bit of extra postage, but it's so worth it when we make these personal items to mail out. So what I have here is a seven and a quarter by five inch folded mailable. And when you open it, it is perfect for writing those notes that we can write right here. And then we have a pocket right here that you can also pull out, write a note, or you can place photos in this pocket. And what we're doing here is we're combining two things that we've been working with recently, envelopes and chipboard. So this is going to be a very sturdy, keepsake worthy mailable, but you don't have to have chipboard for this project if you don't have chipboard. So I am going to go ahead and show you everything that we need to make this beautiful project. So I am going to be starting with some envelopes and the envelopes that I have are seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. And these envelopes are a part of an Anna Griffin card making kit. And you guys who have been with me for any amount of time know that I really buy those kits for the embellishments that are inside. So I'm left with a lot of card bases as well as envelopes. And I'm trying to use up some of the envelopes. So today we're going to be working with one envelope for me that starts with seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. So for me, mine is a chipboard project. You might not want to use chipboard. You might just want to double up on some cardstock and get that consistency. Or you might want to check out the video in the description box to show you several different ways to get chipboard if you don't happen to have any. So I'm working with a medium weight. The link is in the description box. And this chipboard measures five by seven and a half. And then I have some cream colored cardstock that we're going to be using in case you want to write a note or mount a picture. And I have one piece that measures four by four, and I have one piece that measures six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then I have my envelope. Remember, I started with an envelope that measured five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I'm leaving it at seven and a quarter this way, but I removed some of the height and I took it down from five and a quarter to four and a half. So what I have here is an envelope that measures seven and a quarter by four and a half. Then I have a cover piece for that envelope that measures seven and one eighth by four and three eighths. Then I have my inside liner. This measures 10 by seven and a quarter. And then I have two pieces of eight and a half by 11. Now all of these papers that I'm using are from Hobby Lobby's Paper Studio. So the Paper Studio is 50% this week at Hobby Lobby, whether in the store or online. And if you're looking for this paper, you will be able to get this paper for about 30 cents. Now this paper is called Fall Plaid and the SKU is 1678093. This pumpkin paper is also about 30 cents a sheet 
and it is called Painted Pumpkins, SKU 1678101. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our chipboard and go ahead and make the jacket for this. So the chipboard pieces, when I put them down, I'm going to be putting them down with very little fold over space because I want both of them on one sheet of eight and a half by 11. So I'm putting them down like this. I have already added double stick tape to the back of my project pieces. So I am going to remove that double stick tape. And I'm going to take this piece and put it down. Then I'll do the same thing here. And you guys might hear a bell in the background. If you do, that is my little puppy Loki. She is spending time with me today. So I'm going to take this piece and when I place it down, I'm going to give myself about a quarter of an inch in spacing in between the two. And then I'll flip it over and use my big old spatula to get it nice and stuck. And now I'm going to take my stylus and just go around and create a score. Now this is a very lightweight scrapbook paper. So it is not prone to cracking. If you're using a thicker paper, I would definitely take the time to do this part of the process because it will help if you have a paper that's prone to cracking. Might not stop that cracking, but it could help. All I'm doing is taking my paper and folding it on that crease so that it can get ready to be folded. Now I'm going to take my finger blade and we're simply going to miter those edges. Then I'll bring in my tape runner and I'm just going to place tape along the edges. And I know that the tape runner link in the description box is showing out of stock. This frequently happens because the tape runner is very popular, but just keep checking. Or if you have a tape runner that you were using before I ever started using this one, by all means use what has worked for you. And I'm going to fold this over. And then I'll go back with my big old spatula and we'll get everything nice and stuck. So I have it folded over. I'm just going to use my spatula and get everything nice and stuck. And so now we have our jacket piece. So I'm going to take my inside liner and we're going to place it down just like that. Now I have already placed tape along three of the outer edges and I need to place tape here. So I am going to take my tape and just place my tape right there. And I'll set that to the side for just a moment. And now I want to place tape to cover this chipboard. So I am just going to take my tape and we're going to cover our chipboard. And then I'll use my big old spatula to make sure I have my tape nice and stuck. And we are going to peel away the tape backers from the liner as well as the jacket. And now we can take this piece and we're just going to place it down so that everything is nice and neat. And then I'll use my big old spatula to go in and get everything nice and stuck. And I'll go in and get my fold nice and foldable. And then I'm just going to fold it. And so now we have our beautiful jacket. And don't you guys just love the look of this as it is right now? Whether you're celebrating someone's birthday or you want to drop someone a note, this is a beautiful way of doing it. 
So now I'm going to bring in an envelope so that I can show you how I actually cut it down. So we need to seal this completely. And once I have it sealed, I'm going to take it, place it in my trimmer, and we just trim it down to four and a half. That's all you do. So whether you're using this size envelope or not, you just want to trim it so that you have a little pocket. So now I have my trimmed envelope and I'm going to cover it with some more of this plaid. And this piece again measures seven and one eighth by four and three eighths. So I already have tape on the back. I'm going to peel away the tape and I'm just going to place it down I'm going to try very hard to get it as even as I can. And then I'll use my big old spatula to just go over the top and smooth that out. For this part, I'll be using my oval punch. And all I want to do right here is just make a little opening notch. So I'm going to put this in and then I'll punch. So now that we have that opening punched, I have tape on the back of my envelope already. I'll peel away the tape backers and we'll stick this down to the jacket. And so now when I stick it down to the jacket, I'm actually going to bring it very close to the bottom and place it down. And I think that is just so pretty already. I don't know about you guys, but I am loving it. And so this piece of writing paper, or it could be a photo mat, measures six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And we'll actually put it inside of the envelope like that. But I don't want to put it in the envelope undressed. So I am going to take a nice little sticker and place that sticker across the top. So I am going through my handy dandy little sticker book here and I already see the one that I want to use. And I'll tell you what guys, putting my stickers in binders has been the best thing for me in terms of organization. And for those of you who haven't purchased any binders, I'm actually working on a way that we can make some very durable binders that aren't flimsy and they're just as stable as what I am using. I decided that I wanted to go with this because it really does work on this project. So I'm just going to get a piece because I don't want to waste any of this. So I'm just sort of measuring out some. I'm going to trim it off. And then I'll take this piece and I'm going to put it right along the top. And I'm going to trim away that little piece. And I know I have a lot of stickers, but I'm going to save this piece anyway because I can probably use it just to hold something down. And so now we can take this and just tuck it in our pocket. And look how pretty that is. So here at the top, I want to take this piece of four by four and we're just going to use it as a little writing space if you want. I have already added a couple of strips of tape to the back and I'm going to place this down at a slight angle. Then I'm going to go back to my sticker sheet and I want to find just some cuteness. And I think I'm going to use the same sticker sheet because I want it all to tie in. So I think what I'm going to do is take this one that says hello fall and we'll put it right there. And then here across the bottom, I'm going to take this one that says beautiful autumn and we'll put it right there. And then here on the inside, I am just going to take this one because I like the combo of it and it says home sweet home and we're going to place it right there and then I have this wonderful piece of ephemera and it is from 
the Fall Collection by Echo Park. And the SKU on this is 938-8801-870. And what I did was I ran it through my sticker maker and turned it into a sticker. And I'll have that video linked below as well. So I'm going to have two videos linked in the description box that will be helpful. The first one is how to make your own chipboard if you don't have chipboard. And the second one is how to turn ephemera into a sticker. So I am going to take this and just place it down. Go over it with my big old spatula. And isn't that just so stinking cute? I love it. And I think that anyone who received this in the mail would love it as well. So what we're going to do now is make an envelope for this. So to make my envelope, I have decided to use some more of the plaid and I am using a full eight and a half by 11 inch sheet. We're going to be very skimpy on this because it's going to be somewhat of a tight fit. So on the eight and a half inch side, we're going to score at one quarter of an inch. And we'll rotate it to the opposite eight and a half inch side and score at one quarter of an inch. Then we're going to rotate it to the 11 inch side and we're going to score at five. And then we're going to score at 10 and a quarter. And so now we can fold and burnish our scores. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into an envelope. So we're going to cut here and cut here, cut here and cut here, same thing here, same thing here, here, and here. And when we do that, we're going to end up with an envelope shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and notch out here, notch out here. And I'm pretty much going to cut straight down here because, because I don't want to angle in too much. And then we'll cut here. And I'll do the same thing here. So I'm going to cut here. And I'll pretty much cut close to straight down here. And then we're going to fold these pieces in bring this up and glue that down and place a very thin bead of glue and I'll do the same thing over here so I'm just placing a very thin bead of glue so now I can take this piece and I'm just going to bring it up and get it stuck and so while it's drying I'll go ahead and add a strip of double stick tape across the top so that we can definitely drop this in the mail. And now we have our envelope to go along with this. So I'm going to take it and just place it down in the envelope. And now we can take that top, fold it over and seal it. And this is ready to be mailed. And like I said, this is probably going to take just a little bit of extra postage, but it won't be a lot. And based on the joy that you'll be bringing to the person that you send this to, I think it's going to be worth the extra few pennies that it'll cost to mail this. So I think I'm going to add something just to the front of my envelope. I did not to the first one, but I think I'm going to do that to this one. So it's not going to be anything over the top but I do like this little bottle of flowers. It looks like a mason jar with flowers and I'm just going to place that right there. It does not interfere with being able to place a label here and a return label here. And so there we have a super cute way of bringing back the lost art of writing personal notes, putting postage on them and dropping them in the mail. Yes, anytime that we take the time to reach out to someone is special, but we can make it even more special by reaching out in this way. So I am going to bring that first one back in. 
so that we can see all of this goodness. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just add a sticker to the outside of this one as well. And so I'm just going to take these little pumpkins and add them to the front because they stay in line with the pumpkins that I have here. And so you can see all of this goodness that we have. And it was so easy to make and it's so inexpensive to make. Like I said, you could make up bunches of these and sell them at your craft fair. You could actually make some of these for all seasons, place them in a box, make that a gift, or make that a sellable item. Totally up to you. Any season, any reason, any gender, guys. So I hope that you have enjoyed this super duper awesome plaid and pumpkin autumn project. If you have, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.